report with your data. I don't get to see the data. It's your report. The next page is more training with some different questions for the next report and then your data. Um, good to finally connect with you. I, I wanted to ask you, let's, we were kind of talking off air for a minute. Um, there's a book, Michael Gerber, the E-Myth that kind of relates to your backstory. For those of you guys who've never read mm. it, um, as we were saying, the first time you read it, it's a little bit mind blowing because you realize every, your entire approach to business up until that point has limited what you're doing. But I love to hear kind of, you, you mentioned you had worked with Michael Gerber, your backstory, and then kind of what some of those changes meant for you in business when you, when you, uh, you know, started applying uh, the myth. It changed everything for me. So I started my first, I left the UK, I don't know, 25 odd years ago. And about a year later, I was in New Zealand, in Queenstown, New Zealand, right in the mountains, beautiful part of the world. And I decided I was working in a business that I didn't think was doing everything they could. I tried to go to them with a bunch of ideas. This is more story than you wanted. I'll cut it short. But eventually I basically set up a competitor business. And I was given two books by my best mate then. One was uh, The Cash Flow Quadrant. So by Kiyosaki, same guy as you know, Rich Dad. Yep. But it, I think it's a better book than Rich Dad. Um, so do I. It's more yeah. of the... Yeah. It's more of the of, of the why you would want to be a business owner, right? The whole quadrant with the ESBI yeah. thing. And then the second book was the myth, which was the how. And that book changed my world. I had that first business for 18 months. I systemized the crap out of it from day one. I literally worked behind the counter for two days, wrote the staff manual, elevated myself to manager, hired some people and went, there you go, there's the manual. Then I wrote the manager manual, promoted one of them to manager, got out of that. Then I wrote the owner's manual. And when I sold it, which was a, that's another long story, but basically off the back of a conversation with my accountant, I met up with a friend of his. I literally, I was so naive. I thought we were just meeting for coffee. Uh, half an hour later, I was shaking his hand, selling the business. And I sold the whole thing in six days because it was so systemized. He could just walk in, take over. And I left New Zealand literally six days later and moved to Sydney. So that was all basically off the back of reading the book. Then when I got to Sydney, I discovered there was this thing called an e-myth coach or an e-myth consultant. I'm like, where were you 18 months ago? We could have right. shortcut the whole thing. Right. Um, I went to a Tony Robbins event, Unleash the Power Within, came out of there, hair on fire. I went, fuck it, I'm just going to do it. Wrote a letter to Gerber, heard nothing back like you do. Six weeks later, I get a call from Gerber's PA. Michael's just walking out of a meeting. He'd really like to talk to you. I'm like, the Michael. He's, he's like, I'm like this tiny little ant. And he's like Michael Gerber, the guy that was responsible for my first business, having a decent exit. And he wants to talk to me. So I have a chat. And he basically says about four times a year, we invite a dozen people to California. Uh, would you like to come and train with us? I went, yes, I would. He went, great. It's next Tuesday. This was Friday. And I had a Bucks weekend away up in the mountains north of Sydney which I went on and I literally said, I'm going to need to talk to your PA again because uh, I'm going to need a little bit of help with like hotels and shuttles. And I ran up to Sydney, like booked my flight, came back, went on the Bucks weekend, came back, jumped on a flight on the Monday morning, arrived in California. This is a month after 9-11. There's like 14 wow. people on the flight. It was crazy, but I had the funds to do it because of the first thing. And anyway, I ended up training with Gerber and becoming an Edith coach. And yeah. I absolutely sucked at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to know your lane, right? You know, it's it's really interesting that you mentioned that because uh, for those of you guys who never let, read the cash flow quadrant, you know, two of the quadrants that are there are like S for like small business owner and B for like big business owner. And the difference between the two of those quadrants is in a big business, you have systems in the same way that like Ray Kroc isn't running out the door to flip the burgers. And you mentioned that, like, basically, you finally understood that level that you could actually systematize it. And I love the the story about, like, here, replacing my job in two days and then replacing the manager and going all the way up the chain of command. That's really amazing. And a lot of times, too, when people buy companies like that, um, you know, they're really buying the systems and the processes, which is why franchises Absolutely. are so popular. Um, yeah, because people well, want the, the magic easy button, right? They're just, yeah. like, they're not really entrepreneurial. They're just, like, tell me how to be entrepreneurial and then I can follow the system Yeah, and it tells me who to hire when and 
how to run it and yeah, all the way down to how to cash up at night, but it's, it's just a, a business is just a system of systems. Yeah. Um, and for a more up-to-date version of that, I would highly recommend a book called Systemology by Dave Jennings. That's really, really good. Mm. Emit's getting a little bit dated now. The strategy, the fundamental ideas are still really, really strong. But if if you're, I don't know, if you're 21 and you read that today, you're probably like, who is this guy? Like, this is really old. And um, But yeah, it's, it's worth a read. It was the small business Bible back then um, and still worth a read. Yeah, I think they're pretty timeless principles as well, especially if you, yeah, the technology and tools have changed. Um, wanted to switch gears a little bit, Mike, because one of the things that you talked about that I think every good Google ads person does, but I, especially like those who have like really like kind of, I don't know, you're you're a top 1% kind of agency in the world, um, is, is the, the idea of like walking in the door and finding those quick wins and not like, mm-hmm. you know, going after the the hardest, most difficult things, but, you know, the low-hanging fruit. I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of the things that our folks can do when they've started, they've got into these ad accounts. And, that, you know, I think a lot of our people are managing their own ad accounts, things they can do to find some quick, easy, low-hanging fruit mm-hmm. and ways they can get some wins out of what's already kind of going on there. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a couple of links after this that you can share with your members. Um, so years and years ago, I basically systemized my brain as for a Google ads audit. Like what are all of those questions essentially that I'm asking of the data to find those quick wins? What's going to have the biggest impact? Cause there's a, an experience part to that, but also you can follow the checklist and make a quick assessment, what those things are to help you zone in on those quick ones. Right? So I've turned my audit process, which over the years has been a series of questions. I've basically turned that into a 40 page, Data Studio, we should now call it Looker Studio uh, report. And basically on every page, there's a training video with a list of questions to ask your data. And then the next page is that report with your data. I don't get to see the data, it's your report. The next page is more training with some different questions for the next report and then your data. So it's 20 pages of training, 20 pages of your data, and that will walk you through the whole audit process. And I give that away for free. So that would be where I would start with that rather than trying to explain, um, go here and look at this. I mean, I'll try that way as well if you want. I think the the single most important quality of a Google Ads person is the ability to zoom in and out. This was explained to me years ago by my very, very good friend, Rob Siraki, who you might know in Planet Perry Circles. Yeah, Genius I- of a guy and a wonderful, wonderful human being. And he said, it's like when you're playing a computer game. You know, if you've ever played one of those like civilization games, I used to play a lot of Red Alert as a kid. Um, That ability to sort of like zoom out, see the whole game board, and then like zoom in over here and plant some more crops or whatever to feed your people and zoom out and then I'll zoom over there and fight that battle. That ability to zoom in and out is the thing that I think separates that, you know, top 5% person from someone who's just trying to, to, to get through with Google ads. And if you, if, if you're listening to this, I suppose, as that business owner, as someone running their own account, and you think, I don't do that, great. Just if, knowing that is probably really important. If you log in and you see all of those numbers and you go, I don't know what to do with this, I would say the best thing you do is go hire someone to, it sounds very self-serving as an agency. I don't mean hire me, but hire someone that can help with that because you're wearing 12 other hats as a business owner. Yeah, Maybe you're just banging your head against the wall trying to make that work. And I think, you know, five, 10 years ago, you could get away with that because it was a much easier game then. The interface was much less uh, overwhelming. These days, it is so cutthroat. You are competing with those top 3% of agencies who know all the tricks and have been doing it for a lot, lot longer. And it's yeah. really, really difficult. Perry talks about this all the time. You know, we've gone from an 80 20 game where 20% of advertisers get 80% of the rewards. We've moved to a 95-5 game and we're heading very quickly to a 91-1 where 1% of the advertisers will reap 99% of the rewards. Yeah. And by definition, most people are in the 99%. Hey guys, if you like this video, you'll probably also like our free Facebook group, Beyond Agency Profits, Agency Lifestyle Design. 
Uh, you can get free copies of the book inside here. It's I look ridiculous. We're doing weekly Q and A's, giving answers to all your questions. Some of the best, smartest, brightest people. We've got lots of industry leaders doing seven, eight figures and beyond. It's a literal who's who of the brightest uh, agency owners that I know, as well as lots of tips on scaling and stuff, books that work. So if you're not already part of it, uh, you're going to want to be part of it. So make sure to click the link. I put it in the description of the video as well as in the pinned top comment below. So just scroll down and you can join and it's totally free.